Good afternoon and welcome to another in our daily series of programs, Luncheon at the Augusta House. Today's program is outside of our usual locale of the Augusta House dining room as a special feature. This afternoon's presentation comes to you under the sponsorship of the Fairview Wine Company of Gardner, Maine. Every day we highlight a personality of interest in a 20-minute across-the-table discussion. For the newest in taste enjoyment, select the new Maverick Wine by Fairview. This is a delicate beverage creation that's not too sweet or too dry. It's a moderate wine blended for discriminating tastes. As a before-dinner appetizer or as an after-dinner beverage, Maverick by Fairview is just right. You'll find after one sampling that this Fairview selection is pleasing and inexpensive, whatever the occasion. Maverick is available at all main state liquor stores and is listed as number 949. If you're looking for a natural beverage with a natural flavor, then Maverick by Fairview is a must. Maverick, like all other Fairview selections, is bottled at one of the most sanitary bottling plants in the country, the Fairview Wine Company of Gardner, Maine. It's a plant famous for its cleanliness and scientific processing methods. When selecting a good wine, try Fairview by Maverick for delightful entertaining. You'll enjoy this gracious beverage, a new sensation of the vintner's art. This afternoon on our luncheon at the Augusta House, we thought that an outlook into the so-called G.I. Christmas might be an interesting sidelight, and as such, we have invited a now civilian member of and a former G.I. to be our guest for the show. He's David Patterson of Augusta, and a very pleasant good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the program, Dave. Same to you, Norm. Uh, Dave, uh, we want to ask you first of all concerning yourself. Of course, we know that uh, you were an Augusta native and you attended Coney High School. You are now married, and I understand uh, very shortly to become uh, a father. And it could be at any moment, even Christmas Day, couldn't it? That is very true, Norm. We're anxiously awaiting the new birth of the baby. And uh, it, it's been a long process, and we're getting right up into the final moments of Christmas, so who knows? You, you <laughs> might be the, the parent of a, a Christmas youngster. Yes, that's very true. Uh, let's ask concerning Christmas. I know there's going to be a far cry this year from what it was a few years ago when you spent uh, about three years in Europe, and particularly France. In, of those three, though, I think you did manage to get back to the States one year. Yes, I did, Norm. In 57, I was able to get home. I was very fortunate to be able to do so. So that one year, I was able to spend Christmas with my folks, which was a very happy experience being in the service, of course. Yes, I recall very vividly. You came back by one of the, was it a jet or? Yes, it was TWA. It was, yes. wasn't it one of the first jet? Uh, yes, one of, the, one of the first dozen, I believe, that was open for that particular item. That uh, must have been quite an experience to uh, take that trip. How long did it take you? Well, we made it all, in, totally, in about 12 hours, but we were held over in Newfoundland at one point on account of the snow coming down, but after that we made it in safely. I understand they're still having problems weather-wise up there. In yes, <laughs> yes, it's still very difficult. Uh, principally, your um, uh, tenure uh, of uh, service was in France, I believe. Yes, right? that's correct. I was stationed at Lone Air Base. It was about 70 miles northeast of Paris. You know, you hear a lot about uh, Christmases uh, in Europe, uh, GIs and the type of Christmas which they have. I wonder if you can give us sort of an overall capsule of uh, what type of situation is it? Well, Norm, it differs considerably, of course, from our own Christmas. Now, the GIs are all there at the base, of course. Some of them are able to get off base. But most of us have to stay around in case we're called on alert duty to work Christmas Day. Now, of course, Christmas Eve, we have the annual trimming of the tree in the Airmen's Club. This is a club that is strictly for enlisted personnel. They have ping pong tables, pool tables, etc. Now, when we trim the Christmas tree, of course, the girls there who run the service club kind of overlook the situation. We trim the tree with the ornaments, and we all have different gifts we can put around the tree. And then Christmas Day, of course, we open them and look over and see who got what. This is somewhat of a change from the regular routine of things uh, in Army life or uh, Air Force life, isn't it? Yes, considerably there, too. Because, of course, being GIs, we do have a different outlook. We're thousands of miles away from home. Christmas is quite a bit different. We have no loved ones or relatives there, of course. So it, it makes quite an important thing to us to have that little bit from home. And uh, as such uh, as, as presents coming in the mail and that type of yes, thing? Yes, that, I yeah. might stress, Norm, is a most important thing. And for the people in this locale who do have sons, brothers, or any relatives, even friends, 
at a station overseas it is a very marvelous thing to receive gifts from home, especially at Christmas time. It means so much difference in the morale of the men itself. It's really amazing to see how the faces can light up of grown men who have received a little something from home. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, I detect from all of this here that the Air Force or the Army uh, become a little, perhaps a little more humane at this time of year. It isn't the, the, the cold-blooded <laughs> professionalism that we no, hear about. No, that is the one time of year when we kind of let our hair down and really enjoy ourselves. The commanding officers of the base kind of give us a little leisure time, as, as most can be expected, of course, and there is no overhanging duties such as KP, guard duty, things mm. like that, except, of course, for the necessary duties that the air policemen would have to hold, the cooks who work in the chow halls, of course. Did you encounter the type of units who traveled, uh, who do travel regularly to such uh, Air Force centers during the Christmas season? Uh, Bob Hope, of course, is perhaps the, the best example of that, the, the well-known uh, American stage or Hollywood personalities who travel to the, these bases. Yes, Norm, we were very fortunate one year in 58 to have Miss Olivia de Havilland there for our Christmas show. She's a very fine person and a, a wonderful woman to work with. She very graciously consented to being in our little Christmas pageant. It wasn't too much, but she seemed to take a great hold of it. And I might add that when she came to the base, she toured the many 16 bases in France. Now, a contract, of course, had to be drawn up for her, but she didn't want to be reimbursed in any way. So the contract drawn up was for one dollar plus expenses. It covered the legal aspects of her, her appearance then. Yes, that's... Uh, this, uh, this is a, an interesting thing. Uh, you had some connection with uh, the special service end, which was the, uh, the, uh, the show business end of it. It's yes, that's correct, Norm. My normal duties were outside, and so therefore I had a part-time job at the service club. Now, the service club, of course, we lined up these touring shows had the different ones there when we could. We also handled the local shows. We had different games, different nights for certain cards. And of course, we supervised over pool and the ping pong tables and things of that nature. In these shows that you speak about, how about some of the, the French personalities? And as much as this was France, did uh, some of these people participate? Yes, yeah, some of the French civilians who worked on the base would come in and once in a while we'd have them in a show. Now I remember one particular fellow who was an accordion, accordionist and he was very good but he seemed to be a very shy person but once he got on stage everything went fine and he did a marvelous job. How about some of the French stars? Did, did, did uh, no, we do? were very unfortunate that way. We did line up the uh, French comedian, oh, I can't recall his name now, but he's a fabulous pantomimist but he happened to be doing a special Christmas show in Paris, Christmas Eve, so therefore, of course, he had to turn us down. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're going to get back to you in just a moment, Dave, and ask you concerning uh, some of the customs that you may have observed insofar as French people are concerned and their celebration of Christmas. Right now comes that halfway break in the program where we uh, speak about our sponsor and tell nice things concerning this time of year. You know, and since earliest time, poets and composers have lauded the qualities of a fine wine, a delicate creation from the grapes of nature. And because wine is such a traditional favorite, it is only sensible that you serve the best available, a Fairview California leader wine. There's a selection for every occasion, whether you wish port, white port, sherry, muscatel, tokay, angelica, maverick, or American Molliger kosher style. Entertaining with a Fairview wine is a gracious gesture and an inexpensive choice for small budget families. In addition to beverage service, a Fairview wine can be applied to everyday cooking to take it out of the ordinary class. The use of wine in cooking lends a new spark of interest to common foods, creating a new interest for family appetites. And when you have an entertainment or cooking problem, solve it without worry. Select a Fairview California Leader wine as a beverage or cooking condiment. Insist on Fairview bottled in Gardner, Maine for Maine people. Our guest in this afternoon's luncheon at the Augusta House, David Patterson of Augusta, who is speaking to us with regards to Christmas, the Christmas of a GI, and Christmas in France. As I was reading the commercial there, I, it suddenly came to me that uh, France is, of course, the very important country wherein wines are concerned. Uh, with regards to France now, and the celebration of Christmas as such, we know that uh, it probably varies 
somewhat from what we know Christmas as being. For one thing, I think that the hustle and bustle that we encounter in this country is not so prevalent. Is that right? That is very true, Norm. It seems to go in a very orderly fashion. The people who are out buying gifts go about it in a very casual manner and seem to have no inclination or idea that it's a very important holiday outside of the normal birth of Christ, of course. But the children, they get the big boot out of seeing the different toys and the little trains that go around the Christmas tree windows. They celebrate Christmas usually just about the same manner we do with the Christmas tree and the hanging of the stockings and things of that nature. However, of course, the one difference would be, I think, in the temperature and the atmosphere, the climate, etc., of France. Now, one year in particular, I remember Christmas as a very muddy, damp, and miserable day. There was no snow whatsoever on the ground, and many of the vehicles on the base were getting mired in the mud. Mm -hmm. The following year, however, we did have a big blizzard, and we were all snowed in, so there is quite a vast difference in climates year to year there. More like spring when you get into a mud season. <laughs> yes. But uh, th that change when you had a snowstorm uh, must have given you more of the atmosphere such as we have right here at home. Yes, that did bring back the little twinge of being home. I understand that Santa Claus is known as the Bonhomme Noel in France and that uh, you had a French janitor who uh, inherited that name, or Santa Claus, didn't he? Yes, he was built quite a bit like our own favorite Santa Claus. He's very stout and short. Now, this man, he couldn't speak a, a word of English, and, of course, very few of us could speak French. And we nicknamed him Santa Claus at that particular Christmas in 57, and that name stuck the year around and throughout the rest of the time I was there. He was a very grateful man and would be most appreciative, as the French people are, of the slightest thing. Now, at Christmas time, we only gave him a carton of cigarettes. But you would have thought that the man had received $500 in cash, the way he went over it and went around thanking everyone, tears in his eyes and not a bit of shame. Very mm -hmm. proud indeed. You say that the, this, uh, this feeling is predominant, the appreciation which the French people have. Yes, very predominant, Norm. They don't like to have the Americans go around throwing dollar bills here and there. I was fortunate through the times I was there to be invited to French homes. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask about that, if you had the opportunity of viewing uh, life in a French home as opposed to an American home. Yes, I, I was. I was very fortunate indeed. And of course, when we went out, we would always take a little gift along, just something minor that cost a dollar, a dollar and a half. And they appreciated that so much more than if you were to give them something big like an electric shaver or something like that. They didn't seem to have the feeling that you had to give them something to be welcome. It, w it wasn't that at all. Apparently, then, this, this matter of the gift and the, the, the bigness of it or the value of it uh, has not at least uh, hit in that country. No, it, it, it has it here to a certain Europe. extent, I'm afraid, <laughs> uh, which is a bad feature. Uh, how about uh, some of the, Had you uh, had an opportunity to go to some of the other countries uh, around the Christmas season, or were you always confined to the France? Well, I was always confined to France on account of my job at the base during the Christmas holidays, of course, the long holidays made it necessary for me in my particular career field to be at the base. However, I did, of course, get around to different countries at other times during the year. Mm -hmm. Which uh, of the countries, after having been in that uh, part of the world, would you say was uh, the most appealing to you? Well, I'm afraid I have to favor Denmark. Uh -huh. It was a very clean country, and, and people literally, Norman, were on the streets early in the morning with their scrub brushes and pails, and believe it or not, were scrubbing their sidewalks and driveways on their hands and knees. Uh, Copenhagen? Uh, is oh, that yes, wunderbar. Cool, Copenhagen. I love it. <laughs> uh, one Christmas, however, you had an opportunity of perhaps getting a little more of the feeling of home, I understand, because uh, uh, one of the staff sergeants invited you as his yes. guest? Yes, that's right, Norm. Staff Sergeant Lankford, who worked with me, invited me to his trailer on the base to spend the Christmas day with him. And we decided the night before that we'd have barbecued chicken outside. Well, of course, it wasn't snowing at the time, so we prepared the chicken and the barbecue pit and the many other items. So early Christmas morning, it started snowing. Around noontime, it was really coming down the way it was here a few days ago. But being GIs, we didn't mind that too much, and we went right out in it, 
and we had our barbecued chicken in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> it's kind of an experience, isn't it? Eh? Yes, it was, but we were GIs and therefore subject to do things of a little bit different nature. I suppose you can look back on this here and, and get quite a chuckle out of it. Uh, I'm just wondering, from your standpoint, uh, would you like to try it once again? I would like to try it once again, but not in the service. I'd prefer to be a civilian, I'm afraid. A not. civilian. Um, well, the customs of uh, the various countries are interesting. I, I think the thing that you pointed out with regards to the French and their manner of handling Christmas is a particularly interesting one because it seems that uh, Christmas has gone back to the youngster, the child, and yes. uh, that, that is the, their principal emphasis, isn't Very it? Very much so, Norman. Uh, do you know if this holds true from the most of the other European yes, countries? Yes, the uh, European countries really have Christmas for the children. They uh, exchange gifts between the parents that are, are very minor things. But the children really seem to get the whole thing out of Christmas. Of course, over there, the wage rate is much lower than ours, so therefore they don't get quite as much. But everything is so gratefully appreciated over there. The little things, like I say, that mean so much. Mm -hmm. when, uh, I mentioned Denmark a few moments ago to you. Uh, a few days ago, we received from a friend of ours who is now working in the, a uh, tourist bureau. They started their own tourist bureau in Denmark. A complete rundown of what Christmas in Denmark involves. And uh, I was, uh, I'm sorry that uh, perhaps you did not have the close association with Denmark at Christmas time because this is, this is quite interesting, the, the, the various backgrounds on it. I think we probably will use this as part of our program coming, this coming Monday when also Grandma Moses will be oh. part of the, the feature of our show. I'm sure the people will enjoy it very much. Well, Dave, it's been a very interesting uh, conversation with you. I do hope that uh, that baby comes along and that you become a Christmas father and that you will have something to remember from the standpoint of Christmas 1960. Well, thank you, Norm. And I hope that uh, you don't have to wait too long anyway. So <laughs> I hope not, too. <laughs> David Patterson of Augusta has been our guest on luncheon at the Augusta House today. Here's a suggestion, and that is to treat yourself and your guests by serving Fairview California Leader Wines. California leader wines have a way of turning even the simplest meal into a banquet. Your food preparations will taste better than you ever imagined possible. Make sure that your kitchen cabinets contain, in addition to a good selection of condiments, a variety of California leader wines by Fairview. For superb cooking, make sure there's a selection of port, white port, sherry, and muscatel. And as you cook with these artful flavorings, a new aroma will rise in your kitchen, and modest dishes will take on the semblance of a famous chef's masterpiece. What's more, you'll find that cooking with a Fairview California Leader wine is inexpensive. It costs so little, yet adds so much to the goodness of every meal. So sometime today, stock up on a basic supply of California Leader wines by Fairview for improvement in home cooking. What with the holiday season being on the agenda, it is perhaps a very good suggestion at this time of year that you see that your wine cellar is complete. We are closing on our broadcast today, and inasmuch as we will not be with you till after the Christmas holiday, which we will, of course, still be observing on Monday, on behalf of our sponsors, our very fine sponsors to the program, the Fairview Wine Company, which has been bringing you this program, low since its very inception, and now presenting it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and also our alternate sponsor, the Depositors Trust Company of Maine, we would like to extend season's greetings to each and every one of you. We will also invite you to be with us on Monday when, as I mentioned previously, we will have a special program involved with the reminiscences of Grandma Moses and also a trip to Denmark via a special release which came to us from the Tourist Bureau, which we mentioned uh, in the course of today's broadcast. You have been listening to another in our daily series of programs, Luncheon at the Augusta House, sponsored today by the Fairview Wine Company of Gardner, Maine. This afternoon's presentation has been outside of the usual locale of the program in order to accommodate the special feature highlighted in this broadcast. Join us daily Monday through Friday from 12.05 to 12.25 as we speak to a personality of interest direct from the colonial dining room of the Augusta House, a Duncan Hines recommended eating establishment. This is your main attraction. This is your Lobster Network station for Kennebec County WFAU in Augusta, Maine. Shop early and get the finest of Christmas turkeys, a fancy grade A first national turkey, 16 to 22 pounds, 45 cents a pound. Here's a special offer. With the purchase of any First National Christmas turkey, you get a free, full-sized, finest apple pie. 
A very Merry Christmas to you and to yours from your neighbors at First National. 25 after 12 noon. Thank <laughs> you.